I am a senior lecturer at Sheffield Hallam University and also run a podcast called Rad Chat with um, Num and Joel Anderson. And as part of the work that Numan has been doing, he has looked at health inequalities, specifically around skin tones. And as a consequence of that work, we have then created an image library on the website to ensure that when you Google skincare reactions in radiotherapy, immunotherapy, chemotherapy, typically they are of white skin. Um, and we, we went on, we did the searches, you go into medical textbooks and you have a look specifically for some of the illustrations and the imaging and it's all on white skin. So Numan had an experience in clinical practice where essentially he was reviewing a patient as part of his role as a radiation therapist and the patient didn't present with redness because they were black. So, you know, from our education and our training, typically we will look for erythema um, and as a consequence of the educational training, you look for that kind of skin tonal redness. And obviously for people of color, that doesn't exist and it doesn't present the same way. So we wanted to address some of the health inequalities and essentially utilize the image library. So we currently have a, a website and on the um, website, there are then downloadable images, which have then information specifically about what that patient had. Um, and we've currently got 2,000 waiting to go on, which will be incredible, but it'll be an opportunity to uh, ensure that the internet has access to these images. And we are free CPD accredited as well. So we're hoping to create some educational resources to help support the training of healthcare professionals and people working within radiation oncology to make sure that they're able to properly assess, but also treat and address any um radiation or immunotherapy chemotherapy related um skin reactions health inequalities yes. so you know from our perspective we absolutely know from our clinical practice and also experience with talking to colleagues that people don't have the fundamental education i'm a lecturer and i will be doing lectures presentations and i don't have the images to represent our whole demographic of society. So it's been brilliant to be able to utilise these images to then help inform the training and education that we deliver. So um, absolutely addressing health inequalities and doing something about it. It's all right that people say this is what's wrong, but you can't just highlight the issue. You have to do something about it. And that's what we're really passionate about doing. So we've identified that this is something that needs to happen. And therefore, what we're doing now is really working hard to make sure that that we're addressing the problem as well. Lots more images. So we crowdsource quite a lot. We have uh, social media pages at rad underscore underscore chats and we're across all social media programs. And essentially we um, communicate quite a lot with cancer patients. They use us as a source of information for radiation oncology, um, not just in the UK, but 125 countries around the world listen to Rad Chat uh, podcast and engage with the social media. So we have that kind of global reach, which is absolutely brilliant because it means that we have a wide demographic of people that are providing us with images. We also uh, collaborate really closely with lots of charities. And again, they are helping and supporting us with collating all these images um, and patients get the opportunity to contribute, knowing that they're making a different to, difference to education and training around the world. And we also find in the UK that the NHS, I suppose because of policies and procedures and the guidelines that we have in the UK, that quite a lot of countries around the world will utilise our processes and protocols, which is brilliant. But if all of our proto protocols are based on white people, then it's not transferable. So we really need to make an effort to personalise care and make sure that we are doing the utmost that we possibly can do for our patients. Um, and hopefully the image library will go some way to do that. Finances, um, which is bizarre, but, you know, we want to pay our patients for donating their images. So um, we've actually had to put in a funding bid to try and get some uh, money from our local cancer alliance in the UK, which we were successful with. So that will mean that when patients are contributing, they are also receiving a token um, you know, it's not a lot of money, it's £10, but I think it shows appreciation for the fact that they're donating images. And um, I was actually really surprised of the how responsive people were to share their images. 
you can imagine sharing a picture with someone that you don't know and is on the internet um, of your breast or we've had someone share photos of their labia, you know, because of they, they've had skin reactions. And, you know, that's very intimate, very personal, and yet they are trusting us. So I think, you know, I can understand why this hasn't happened previously because you have to build trust with people. They have to recognise, you know, why you're doing what you're doing and have the recognition um, and professional identity, I think, that they know how their images are being used. Um, so we had to employ a legal team. So again, costly, set up the website. Um, Numan and I have day jobs. Rad Chat is just something that we do on the side. Uh, I'm sure you know from Onco Daily just how time intensive it is. Um, and so from our perspective, it's, it's kind of making sure that we can keep on top of everything, responding in a timely way to patients, making sure that they get reimbursed for um, any um, anything that potentially is going to impact them. Um, and also as well, thinking about, you know, the maintaining of the website. So there's a lot of storage in uh, presenting images. So it's all that technical side as well. So it's been a huge learning curve for us. Um, and we have an amazing partner hospital somewhere in the world. Um, we're just about to announce it, hopefully, but they have been taking images of their patients and the skin reactions that the patients experience for five years and so they are donating all of their images so for anyone listening if you have contact with patients or you're doing research where you potentially have images of patients who are experiencing side effects get in contact with us is it a possibility that not only are you using those images for your research but could you make it so that actually they're able to be accessed by other people, patients, healthcare professionals, or students who are training and learning. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.